In this video, I'll be making a foam rocket launcher with a design that's really quite simple to put together and nearly indestructible. When I was young, I used to have a toy rocket launcher quite similar to this, but it never launched very far and only came with one rocket. For this project, the rockets I'll be making later in the video are quick and easy to put together and you can have dozens of them made in an hour. Additionally, they can launch upwards of 100 feet, and because of the spiral fin design that I use, they're extremely accurate. I start this project with an array of PVC pipe and fittings. The full parts list can be found in the video description below. The launcher consists of an exterior housing to which the barrel is attached, and a plunger and piston which fits inside to push the air that fires the rocket. The exterior housing is the first part to be made, starting with a 16 inch length of 2 inch diameter PVC pipe. One end of this pipe needs to be reduced to a 3 quarter inch barrel, so I'll start by gluing on a coupling, first by painting a layer of primer onto both the pipe and fitting, followed quickly by cement, then pressing the two together before it dries. This method of first primer, then cement, will be used to attach every glued fitting in this project, and next to go into the open end of the coupling is a 2 inch to 3 quarter reducer. Once it's held securely, into the reducer can be inserted a 1 foot length of 3 quarter inch pipe for the barrel. It too can be glued in, but I found mine was a tight enough fit that glue wasn't necessary. Turning to the other end of the chamber, the first thing that needs to be done is to sand the inside edge of the pipe so that the piston will later be able to slip in easily without damage. Once any sharp or jagged edges have been smoothed away, a 2 inch female threaded adapter is glued in place, completing our work on this half of the launcher. The piston used for this project is made from four parts an inch and one quarter end cap and coupling, and a two inch length of inch and one quarter pipe, and a large o-ring, one and five eighths inches in inner diameter, and two inches in outer diameter. This o-ring fits over the outside of the section of inch and a quarter pipe, and will make a perfect seal within the two inch diameter chamber. The first step to making the piston is to glue the two inch length of inch and one quarter pipe into the end cap, any excess glue should be wiped away because pressed right up against the edge will be our o-ring. Next comes the inch and a quarter coupling with a light coating of glue to permanently sandwich the o-ring in place. This piston design is one of my favorites. It's simple to put together and extremely durable. The shaft that the piston is glued onto is a 24 inch length of inch and a quarter pipe long enough to push it all the way to the end of the chamber made earlier with a few inches to spare. A two inch to inch and a half threaded adapter is slid over the shaft facing the piston. An end cap over the open end keeps it from sliding off again. The end cap does not necessarily need to be glued on because some self-tapping screws will be going through it to attach a small metal L bracket. The purpose of this bracket is so that the user's foot can be rested on it to extend the shaft using only one hand, leaving the other free to reload more rockets. The launcher is nearly complete, but there's one last step to be done before putting it all together. A short section of a foam pool noodle is prepared as a bumper for the piston, by widening the hole in the center slightly to allow more air to pass. I'll be using foam noodles to make the rockets in a moment, so there should be plenty to cut this scrap from. The section of foam is inserted into the chamber and pressed all the way to the end with a spare piece of pipe. This will be a perfect cushion to prevent the piston from slamming into the end of the barrel, which might cause damage. With all parts completed, the chamber and piston can both be lubricated with a spray of cooking oil, being careful to wet the entire o-ring. As the piston is pressed into the chamber, you'll be happy for the effort put in earlier to sand the inside opening smooth. Once the piston has made it inside, the threaded adapter can be screwed onto the chamber to lock the shaft in place. With the launcher now completed, let's make some rockets. I'll be making these rockets out of foam pool noodles like I mentioned before, and some sheets of craft foam and a hot glue gun to make quick work of holding everything together. 
The noodles are measured and cut into 14 inch lengths, which should divide them evenly to make four rockets each if the noodles are of the standard size. The craft foam is then measured and marked as a series of rectangles approximately one and a half by four inches in length, which are cut individually. Cutting these rectangular sections diagonally across the length creates our rocket fins. Each of the sections cut for the rocket bodies earlier can be marked on one end for how three fins should be spaced. This will be the easiest way to estimate where they should be attached. Starting from one of the marks, a bead of hot glue is laid down on a slight angle and a fin is pressed in as it cools. This is repeated for the other two marks as well. Gluing the fins on an angle causes the rocket to be spin stabilized in the air, making it much more accurate than it would be with straight fins. Now to close the nose end of the rocket, a strip of foam is rolled tightly into a cylinder and pressed in as a plug, which is then hot glued in place. It doesn't take long to make a lot of rockets this way, and you can soon be well equipped to rule the neighborhood. Audible.com has once again helped to support my projects by sponsoring this video. If you haven't already received a free audiobook through Audible, you should check them out through the link I've placed in the video description below. If you'd like my recommendation for which book to get as your free download, I'd take a look at The Count of Monte Cristo. It's a classic, and Audible has several versions by different narrators, so you're sure to find one you like. Remember that the free download is yours to keep, even if you don't keep using Audible, but I wouldn't be surprised if you come back for more. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.